Good morning and welcome to today's Sunday Sermon. First, uh, let, me, let me welcome you. And second, let me tell you that uh, I don't have something on my face. That is <laughs> um, some bruising and things that's left. Uh, it's not painful at this point. So uh, um, some of you know that I had a, an incident and uh, uh, I did end up with concussion. Out of that, I had a lot of swelling and bruising. Most of that is, is resolved now and uh, just uh, very minor symptoms left from the concussion. So uh, getting better. And uh, so thank you for your prayers on that. Second of all, I wanna draw your attention to the fact that this is a historic day because this is a final week in Philippians for us. This is sermon number 35 um, that we have had in Philippians as we've worked our way through the book. We'll be at chapter four um, at the end of the chapter, verse uh, 20 to 23. And so, um, I want to draw your attention to, to a word that's there and uh, specifically that shows up a couple of times in, in verse, uh, uh, verse 21 and verse 22 there. And the word is saint. Um, it, it's a familiar word to us. Uh, we're going to kind of use that to hang our, our uh, principles on here a little bit in, the, in this message. But, uh, you know, it's a familiar word, but maybe it's not always a fully understood word. And so we're going to talk about that for just a moment. You know, if I were to ask you, hey, are, are you a saint? Uh, how would you respond? Um, for some people, they might hesitate because they think, well, that um, saint, isn't that somebody that's, you know, like lives at this kind of spiritual level up here? And that's kind of a special person. So I can't really say I'm a saint because that would be kind of egotistical, right? And, and uh um, so anyway, maybe some people back off of that, or maybe some people hesitate because they think, well, saint, aren't those those guys that are, you know, etched in stained glass and, and, uh, or in some kind of a statue or something, right? And uh, so those things might make us feel uncomfortable when we, we talk about using, calling ourselves a saint, being, being called by that term. We, um, you know, we don't think of ourselves as, as living like, like, you know, the, the Mother Teresa's of the world or, or whatever the case is and the person that's always doing the right thing and um, or, um, certainly maybe we don't belong in, in stained glass. But you might be interested to know that Paul's favorite word for Christians is the word saint. Uh, he uses it over 60 times in his writings in the New Testament. Um, and when he speaks of saints, he, the majority of times he's referring to, to Christians and not some special group of Christians, just everyday, ordinary Christians like, uh, like you and me. And so let's take a look. Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse 20. We'll read to the end of the book. He says, To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet all the saints in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me send greetings. All the saints send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. And so Paul completes his letter. In verse 21, he says, Greet all the saints in Christ Jesus. And verse 22, he says, All the saints send you greetings. Uh, so we see by both of those references that the term is is commonly used, and, it, and it's broad. In fact, he identifies all the people in the Philippian church as saints. You can go back to chapter 1, verse 1, when he said, To all the saints in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and the deacons. And so it's not just the, the deacons or the pastors or somebody that, that he's giving the title of saint to. It's all of those that are, are members of that body of believers, all of those who, who uh, have received Jesus Christ they're, they're saints. And, uh, uh, you know, there was once a little boy that said, you know, that, that saints are stained glass figures who block the sunlight. And put another one replied and said, no, no, the saints are the people that let the light shine through them. And really, that is, that is our, uh, the definition of, of us as Christians. Uh, saints, we are supposed to let the light shine through us, the light of Christ um, to shine through us. And so Paul comes to the end of his letter and reminds the, the Philippians of the identification that he gave them at the very beginning of the letter, that in fact they are saints. And so um, hopefully by the time we're done with this today, if somebody asks if you're a saint, you, you can respond and say uh, confidently, yes I am. 
and uh, in that. So first, let's look at the character uh, of the saints or, or the nature of the saints, uh, the definition. The Greek word uh, used here um, for that's translated saints is, is basically set apart or separated ones or sanctified ones. Um, um, even can be translated holy ones. And uh, I did mention... Um, I've got a bad ringing in my ears today. That is one thing's left over. And the louder I talk, the worse it is. So I <laughs> uh, apologize for that, but don't let that take away. Uh, I'll try to focus here. Um, holy ones, uh, saints, set apart, separated ones, right? That, that is, that is the, those are basically synonyms for the word saint. But the best concept is being set apart or being separated. And we know the Bible says that God is, is holy. And the word can be translated holy, as I said, and often is translated holy in Scripture. Um, and it's the same thing. We know that God is holy or God is saintly or God is, is separated. And what's he separated from? Well, God is separated from sin. And that, that basically, that is the um, very purest definition of, of God, that he is, he is separated um, separated from sin and uh, you know that that is the one attribute that is scriptures uses the term holy 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 uh, multiple times repeats it three times why because it defines God's complete um, otherness uh, his his utter um, unlikeness to us in that respect because we are sinful he is separated from sin um, distinct separated from sin so so what is a saint then in a definition a saint is one who has been separated from sin unto God for holy purposes and uh, um, okay separated from sin to God for holy purposes that is a saint anyone separated from sin unto God Okay, so there's further insight of the definition of verse 21. He says, greet all the saints in Christ Jesus. The designation of being in Christ Jesus is, is where sainthood takes place. That little phrase, in Christ Jesus. What makes us separated? What, what sets us apart? It's that we are, are in Christ. Um, it's the Christian's identity. Um, we, we don't just believe in Christ. We don't just believe that he lived and died. We don't just believe that he, he provided salvation. We don't believe that he's just believed that he's come again. We are, we are not only believing Christ, but we are in Christ, in a union of life. So it's not just to know these facts about him, it is to be in Christ. And in that union of life, we are bonded to Christ in that. Um, and, you know, that's not the first time that Paul has referenced things in, in such a way. Chapter 1, verse 21, he sums up what? For me to live is what? Is to live is Christ, right? Christ living in me. I'm in that union, a bond with Christ um, as a Christian. A number of times in other epistles, he uses that term, in Christ or, or in the Lord. Um, for him, you know, Paul said his, his very life was, was Christ um, in that. So, um, in Christ is, 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 uh, such a distinct thing for saints. Um, we, we've received the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and, and in, and with him, the life of God within us, um, it is that righteous nature within us then. Uh, Peter says it this way, 2 Peter 1 says, We have by having received the righteousness and godliness of Christ been delivered from the corruption of the lust that's in this world. A believer that is a saint because every believer is in Christ, separated from sin unto God for holy purposes. Okay, so that's true of all of us if we receive Christ as Savior. Um, so one separated from sin unto God for holy purposes. And that separation has occurred by by that individual becoming a Christian through Christ, so uh, through faith in Christ. So to, Gal to the Galatians, um, Paul even said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, but it, it's not I, it is Christ living in me. Uh, so that we, we get that picture. And You know, people, um, the, you know, that's not true of other world religions. Uh, people aren't in uh, some kind of union with... Uh, uh, Buddha, they're not, they're not in, um, in Buddha, they're, they just believe the teachings of Buddha. They aren't in Muhammad, they just believe the teachings of Muhammad. That is a distinct thing for Christians, that we are in Christ. Um, therefore, we are distinctly separate, this 
distinctly separated ones that are the saints. Um, there should be no reluctance in your heart if you're in Christ to be called saint. And uh, to make it as clear as possible that we identify with that, J. Vernon McGee used to put it this way, that to help you understand there are either saints or ain'ts, right? Um, the Christians in Christ or not. And, and that's the only two kinds of people there are in the world, um, to, to remember that. Um, so um, as we move on down, you know, even Paul even referred in to, to the church in Corinth. That it had a lot of trouble going. If you go back and read in the, the letters to the Corinthians, there were a lot of issues going on with there. And Paul in 1 Corinthians um, 1, verses 1 and 2, he is he, his greeting to them. He says, Paul, called an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who have been sanctified in Christ, saints by calling. Um, so even the Corinthians were saints, but interesting, saints by calling and you see that's the difficulty is that we are called to live up to that title <laughs> to to live up to to uh that position as saints um the second characteristic of saints is the worship of saints we find in verse 20 it says to our god and father be glory forever and ever saints are not only known by the relationship or uh, to um to sin in other words to be set apart from that um, to God through Christ, but saints are known by their worship. Uh, verse 20 is a, is a great doxology. Doxology just comes from the Greek word that means the, um, glory, re, um, ascribing glory to God. And doxology is a response of praise to great truth. And so when, when Paul says in verse 19, and my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus, a burst of praise is appropriate there. It's it at the end of a of a of a reading of a scripture or the sharing of a truth or singing a um, a hymn of of great doctrine. We we might respond with with a hallelujah or an amen or water whatever. That's that doxology that burst of praise. So be it. Amen. I agree. Um, and praise in that. And so. Um, it's fitting here, and we see that. We see the, um, you know, back in chapter 3, verse 3, that um, Paul says, We worship in, in the Spirit of God and, and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. And that's, that's what a Christian is. A Christian uh, is a saint, a worshiper who worships in the power of the Spirit, gives glory to Christ, puts no confidence in the flesh. And so we are, we are worshipers uh, as saints. And, of course, he says, To to uh, our, our God and Father, and it personalizes that and separates that out, and that uh, uh, our God, and not only our God, but he uses that term, uh, Father, which was what a joy to be reminded that, that the God we worship is not just some, uh, not a deity that we worship to avoid punishment, uh, but rather a, a loving Father. And Paul adds that word Father, he immediately closes that gap between the sinner and, and the holiness of God, and he brings us together um, in that. And so the third characteristic of the saints is fellowship. In verse 21, he says, greet all the saints. All, and then also, then he says, the brothers who are with me send greetings. And in verse 22, he says, all the saints that greet you. And that is a lot of greeting. Three times there we see that, um, that verb used. And, uh, you know, it's not just a, a simple hello. Um, it, there's a bond of fellowship um, that is implied in these terms, but, but primarily, as Christians, we are called to love one another, right? And, and so that greeting is sharing that bond of love within there. Um, the, this is Paul's heart back in, um, in chapter 2, which said to them, if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort of love, any fellowship of the Spirit, any affection and compassion, please make my joy complete. How? Remember? By having the same mind, loving everyone the same way, being united in spirit, having one purpose, not being proud, but humble, regarding one another as more important than yourself and not looking on your own things, but the things of others. And namely, having the mind of Christ, having that humility, that fellowship, and they're sharing that Christian bond, that love. And, uh, you know, and also notice that within that fellowship of saints, there's not an elevation of one above the other. Um, you know, there's not a hierarchy uh, in our in our saintlyhood. 
okay? If you take that. Uh, verse 21, Paul says, the brothers who are with me send you greetings. And you know what? Uh, we know that, that there were some spiritual giants that were there. We can cross-reference through other New Testament books and different things and see who was there either at the time or had been back and forth uh, through Rome at the time that Paul was in prison and, and, and had seen him. And we know that, of course, there was Timothy, Timothy and Epaphroditus that were there. We also know that there was um, Aristarchus um, that was a noble Christian that was known, uh, that was there. We know Onesimus was there. We also know by cross-referencing and things, it looks like that maybe that uh, Mark and Luke um, had been there at a, at a point in a time. And so, but he doesn't go through and give some kind of hierarchy of this. He, and he, he groups this together, all of the brothers who are with me. And uh, send you greetings. And, and uh, so we see that. There, there's not a hierarchy or elevation of that. Saints, we are brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus and uh, loving one another. Um, and then, so Paul opens, opens a window of fellowship further in verse 22. He says, all the saints send you greetings. It just includes all those Christians that are with him in Rome. And we see that, that fellowship there. Um, and and uh, kind of help us maybe keep that in yeah, the picture of that. The, the Christian singer is not a soloist they're a member of a choir right that choir that that roman or that roman soldier <laughs> that christian soldier is is not fighting alone he's part of an army uh it's not a solitary figure the christian scholar is not a, a privately tutored learner he's part of a class of uh, of a school the christian daughter is not a lonely child she's a member of a family and uh, keeping that in mind, that's the fellowship. Saints aren't some sort of group of people that exist in isolation. They, they are common possessors of the eternal life of God who share their, um, their love um, and who share their love with one another. And so sainthood is characterized in by being separated, being holy, uh, set apart from sin unto God for holy purposes through faith in Christ. The worship of saints is Godward praise in response to truth and blessing, and then the fellowship of saints is a loving, uh, non-discriminating, mutual care for one another. And so the fourth element we see here in this is the joy of saints. Paul opens uh, that up for us in verse 22 um, when he says, All the saints send you greeting, especially those who, who, what? who belong to Caesar's household. What, that, what a joy. You know, we're told that the greatest celebrations in heaven happen when someone comes to Christ. And, uh, but when, when Paul finishes that phrase, especially those who belong to Caesar's household, wow, think, think about that for a moment. Now, Nero was Caesar at the time, right? We know that, and we know um, C Caesar's hate for Christ and for the Christian, or, well, it was Caesar's, but Nero, as, as Caesar at the time, is, is hate for um those um, for Christians and for Christ. And, uh, but he says, Paul says, the household of Caesar. Well, who's that? Well, we talked a little bit back in, in chapter one, we talked about Paul being chained to a Roman soldier 24 seven, right? They changed out the guard every six hours, but someone was always on a short chain to Paul. And can you imagine that? Paul got to share Christ all day long. And those guys, it, it, it was like they were chained to Paul, not Paul chained to them because, <laughs> um, because he could share and they, they couldn't get away. And so we know that, that some of those members of that, cat, of that uh, palace guard uh, had, um, had heard the gospel over and over again. We also know that there were others that were there that had, had uh, come to know Christ even before Paul was imprisoned, that there were others that were present. Um, in Rome that had come to Christ. And so um, we, have, we have different, um, well, these, these different groups that, that, have, that are within the household. And so the household of Caesar, or Caesar's household would be that palace guard that reports directly to him, plus other, other servants, other employees, others that would be within the palace, the household of Caesar. So it would affect all of, all of those. And so the sharing of Christ, and so that had to be special to know that, that even among Nero's palace, there were people that had come to Jesus Christ. And uh, um, so how exciting uh, of a news that that must have been for Paul to share. So what is the, the joy of, of saints? The joy of saints is to see someone else come to Christ. And then finally, the resource 
of the saints. Verse 23, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. He says there's, there is something um, we need. Saints, something we, we definitely desperately need, and that is grace. And you might say, well, now, wait a minute. I already have, I already have that. I had grace when I was saved. Grace that was unmerited favor of God shown to me when, when, when Christ redeemed me, right? The grace was the starting point of, of my redemption when God in Christ forgave my sin. And you are right. But that is the beginning of grace. That is not the end of grace. Um, we, still, we are still in, in, in as much need of grace as we now as we were then uh we we didn't deserve to be saved then and we don't deserve to keep being saved now um we're we're no more worthy of our salvation now than we were when when uh when we were saved uh but we are sustained by grace through all that time like like the hymn amazing grace says right "Twas grace that taught my heart to fear that would be our salvation and grace will what? Lead me home. It, it is that continuing grace of God uh, upon, upon the saints that, uh, that supports us, that, that uh, keeps, us, keeps us going, that uh, sustains us. It is grace by which our whole life exists. And that's why Paul says in Romans 5, 2, uh, this, grace, this grace in which we stand. Um, it is very, the, what supports it, gives us strength, this very being we live in. We live in that grace where uh, if our life is governed by grace, guided by grace, kept by grace, strengthened by grace, sanctified by grace, and enabled by grace, it's a constant grace of forgiveness, the grace of, of enabling strength, the grace of, of comfort, comfort, the grace of peace or, and of joy, the grace of boldness, the grace of revelation and instruction, all of those things. We are dependent upon that through all of our life as Christians. Paul started out in chapter 1, verse 2, and he's wishing them grace then, and he ends up this letter by, by wishing the grace that upon them. And so he comes full circle about grace, and he says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. And what does he mean by that, with your spirit? Your person, your inner man, the real you. May you know the fullness of grace, that, that purifying, beautifying, sanctifying grace. Let me give you an interesting footnote on, on some things here as, as we get ready to close. Um, every single epistle that Paul writes ends the same way. Every one of them. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, every single one ends with a wish for, grace, for the grace of Christ to be theirs, to whoever he's writing to, to a wish for the grace of Christ to be theirs. And uh, you say, why? Well, because when the letter is over, life goes on, and life is dependent upon that grace undeserved love from God and to an unworthy sinner. And, and we never cease uh, to be what, what we are by the grace of God. Paul says, my longing for you is that you might experience the fullness of this grace. That's the resource of the saints, the unending grace. And whose grace? Well, it's, it's the, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is the theme of this whole letter. The name of Christ is mentioned 40 times in these four chapters. Did you get that? 40 times in these four chapters that, that um, Paul uses the name of Christ. Every couple of verses. He's, he's the heart of the whole thing. Christ is, is central to this entire letter. Um, Paul began by describing himself as a slave of Jesus Christ. He addresses the Christians as saints in Jesus Christ. When referring to his imprisonment, he says, my bonds are in one in Jesus Christ. He says he's there as a bond slave of Christ. When he speaks out about life, he says, for me to live is what? Is Christ. When he speaks out about death, he says, for me to die is Christ, right? And in, in, in all of those aspects, when, when he exhorts people to godly character, it is that they would be what? Like Christ. When he calls for proper attitudes, it's that they would have the mind of Christ. When he, when he speaks of choices and desires and hopes, he says they are to be built on trust in Christ. When he speaks about joy, it is to be the joy 
of Christ. All throughout this letter, when he speaks about strength, it is the strength of Christ. When he calls for power and knowledge and fellowship, it is the knowledge of Christ, the power of Christ, the fellowship of his sufferings uh, that he longs for. And when he speaks and when he looks for eternal hope and glory, he says, I am looking for Christ. And when it's spiritual steadfastness he needs, it is in Christ. When it's the sufficiency that he wants, Paul says that he wants that, in that it is in Christ that he finds that sufficiency. It is Christ, 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 all through this letter. He says, greet every saint in Christ. Remember you're dependent upon the grace of Christ. Our whole life is to be about Jesus Christ. If you get nothing else out of out of Philippians, uh, that joy in Jesus. If you if you get if you get nothing else out of Philippians, get that. Our whole life is Christ, called by Christ, saved by Christ, to have the mind of Christ, to serve the way of Christ, to become like Christ. That's the message: to be like Christ. We are saints. Now the challenge is. To live up to the title that we have right that we not not yet what we should be right but we are to be moving closer day by day to become more like jesus christ the one uh, who called us to be saints i hope you've enjoyed our study in philippians and uh, i i have enjoyed it and and i'm i'm sad that we have finished it <laughs> except that I know what's coming next and where God has directed us. And I'm excited about that. Um, and we will be launching into the Gospel of John. And uh, so I'm excited to come back for that next week as we begin uh, with an introduction to John next week. But Philippians, about Christ, that is our job. That is our life, to be Christ, uh, to become more like Jesus each and every day. Take that challenge to heart. Go back and this is a this is a short book, four chapters. Go back and and reread it. Um, I challenge you to do that a couple of times, with, and looking for every time that that Paul calls to the name of Jesus Christ, to 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 um, our Lord, to Christ, to Jesus, whatever it is that that find those forty times in that letter, and and be drawn to the teaching that is in it. Have a great day.